Hey boss, what you doing? I'm having this with my tablet. You're eating my baklava. sweets. Uh, <laughs> it's baklava. Yeah, I know, but this one is, okay, I'll break that one. I'll take that one, it's broken. And then this one, oh my goodness. Oh, oh very nice. Oh, hang on, get one mm. of them. <gasps> okay, now my coffee, extra strong. Mmm, yum. This is from our friend, her Theo's mom, and Anthea's mom made all of these goodies. Mmm, I think it's dates. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm, now baklava. Mmm, mmm, I think I'm gonna put my orders in. Oh, that's so good. Mmm, I think that's the best baklava I've ever had in my entire life. Mmm, nice, beautiful. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. This cute cactus is Peprocactus mondragora. It is growing, so I need to repot that. And uh, that's a recent acquisition. And this one looks like this Ripsalis. It was only teeny weeny. I need to put that in a bigger pot. This one, oh, Euphobia. Look at you, Obesa, a few of them they're actually growing right now so I need to repot that put that in a bigger pot I think it's still I don't know is that an original pot or I repotted I can't remember now this one look it's getting bigger Wilson's getting bigger and this one look how gorgeous that is and this one's oh I got a few of them outside I mean inside that I need to take outside <laughs> and repot and just put it in one big pot of just fantasy cactus or moon cactus yay hello look at you you're coloring up as well hello beautiful look at you you're flowering isn't that gorgeous beautiful cactus with the name at the back i can't see it's mamilaria bocosana oh wow 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 we beautiful this anacamceros rufescens uh, some of them is really hard to see but you can you see the millibug there so that's a millibug inside there it's camouflaging itself as a white flop from the rufescens but they are millibug so i'll just show you this one okay so this is millibug millibug look at that i am picking up zimillibug it's hiding look see the red oh now it's dead millibug but i will spray this with my metho solution there's quite a few in there, look. Those are mealybug. This is my Semper Vivum Gold Nugget. I know of a lot of people who doesn't like Semper Vivum for this reason that, hang on, see that one there? Okay, that's a mealybug. Look at that. I'm whispering just in case the other mealybug <laughs> would know I'm here to get them. So, look at that. That's a Semper, a Semper V. <laughs> That's a Semper V millibug. That's a millibug. Look at that one. Ah, you're dead now. So anyway, this one is dry as I suspected. So there's a few babies showing in here. And again in the bottom, can you see all those dry leaves? The minute you have dry leaves in the bottom, the millibug shows up. So it's a good idea to look after your Semper Vivum just as much as you look after your Echeverias or Graptoveria, I like to say that. A lot of people tend to neglect the Semper Vivum because they are such a prolific grower. But if you clean them and maintain them as well as you do the other rosette forming succulents, then you're not going to get some millibug. Now that one needs watering, it's dry, but right now it's said to be dormant during summer, but with Semper Vivum, this was actually growing out in full sun before over there. Now my other Semper V, who's still in full sun here, see how they started to go green now. So they like the cold and during winter and spring, or actually starts in late autumn, they start to color up and they show their full coloring in winter when it's really, really cold. So they can survive minus 50. They can be covered in ice and they will survive 
Now, did you have a good Christmas and New Year period? I have been very, very busy. I hope you didn't eat too much like I did. Now, I think I put on 100 kilos. <laughs> Can't breathe, but anyway. These ones came from my balcony and I just brought them down recently because I can't uh, seem to look after them over there. So I barely look after my succulents over down here where I have easy access to them during the day. But if I haven't got access to them, I normally tend to just forget about them and just remember them once a month, which is not good. Those are all leaf grown succulents that I have grown inside and are now, I potted them up and now are growing here. But I haven't got enough space, see? So I have to make more room. And the only way I could do that is to put a lot of the mature plants into the garden. But even that, I haven't got enough time to do that as well because we've been flat out. I've been flat out busy looking after hubby. And it's like I'm having two people having one life. <laughs> <laughs> like if he needs to scratch himself, I have to scratch him as well. So it's like I'm scratching myself. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this uh, whimsy, Chavirio whimsy now is starting to color up. Oh my goodness. Look at this. The pink is starting to go sort of a purpley hue and the yellows are coming out and the green and so this is going I can't believe this is still my original plant but anyway there's the original mother variegated in the center there I don't know if the I'm getting it in the camera there or if it's blurred but it's that green bit in between but these whimsies are all starting to color up nicely so very different from the supreme because the supreme just stays that color and then it will start to this is actually a variegated one. Oh, sorry paketoides this is paketoides keep forgetting them and that one is a supreme so the supreme just goes pink the uh, paketoides Pachyveria pachytoides, I think. Yeah, this is a variegated one. So I can still see a little bit of variegation there. That's showing pink uh, with a greenish-gray background. But overall, you would think that they look very similar to each other. This one now, the whimsy come on its own. The full colors get shown when the temperature goes high. When temperature rises the color shows up but when it cools down they go dull and look at all my babies i wonder how long before you grow so this is my chanel my coco chanel no it's not so i'm just checking because see that one has been licked by a mealybug i actually haven't watered them yet so i harvested them they are all grown this is actually cutting sorry yeah these ones are all cuttings of different uh, succulent now in the bottom here these are all leaf grown so you can see some of them has got toothpicks still that's so they stay place and doesn't wobble all over the place and even that one see they still need to be watered and cleaned up i just can't help myself i have to remove this weed that's growing oh it broke off don't break ah yes i got the roots that is so satisfying check out this gonya ala oh god look in the center there's all this mealy bag because it's dry i haven't watered this for a while and it's really 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 light poor thing so what i'm gonna do is put this somewhere in the shade but before i do that oh check out my propagated pink lady calicia rosato look at all of them ah oh, look excellent oh i forgot to water you but you're still good so it's only been there for less than a week but anyway this one now i'm gonna spray this with my okay before i start using my metho solution before i bought a whole lot of theirs eco pest by multicrop and this is what i've been using for mealybug and the occasional mealybug that i see now at the moment it's 31 degrees so not ideal for spraying it has to be like below 30 degrees to spray this but if you have it out in the sun but what yeah i do is i spray it with this stuff okay all around 
and then I put it in the shade. Oh, this one here will do. Oh no, put it in the bottom. There you go. Just in case some of the mealybug escapes to my other plants, they can escape to the Calicia rosato. Calicia rosato, I haven't seen a single mealybug on them things, but that one can just stew over <laughs> the mealybug. So I'll leave it there, but. Oh yes, my Semper V, I'm not gonna spray it with this stuff. I'm just gonna leave it because uh, I will need to clean it up and see if there's more mealybug uh, underneath. I have to bring that inside. Check this out. This is Sedvaria Pudgy. Is that Graptovaria or something like that? But it's a Pudgy, yeah. And this one, I kind of like all that spikes and <laughs> uh, whatever reminds me of is that a super rose or something like that hang on my camera's getting overheating but anyway look at that see i kind of like that look i don't know why but anyway this is one of my uh t-o-r-t-u-r-e-d uh pudgy that was growing inside grown from a leaf and then now it has survived lots of fungus nuts and I haven't seen a single mealybug on that plant yet, on this particular one. And check out that other pudgy in the center here. Let's go take this out and compare it to the other one. Check that out. Come here, pudgy. Okay, just grabbing it. Now, I lost a couple of the leaves, but we just drop it there. Pudgy one, pudgy two. Look, that other one is not so pudgy anymore. This one is very, very pudgy. How about that? See? Differences in grown outside and grown under the grow light and no watering. So I probably leave it for a couple of weeks with no watering. Oh, so they're very pudgy. This. Yeah. And how about that? It hardened itself. So now this one is ready to go in the garden. And that one, I have to start growing this, pudgy icing it. And so I'm going to pudgy ice you over here first. So this is shade, no direct sun, or else it's going to burn, baby burn. This pot here was my last purchase of succulents. So it's a mix of different ones I got from my last plant hold, these two, and that one. These ones I've grown. That one, I got this one from uh, the same one, the same place. And But this one I got from a different place. So you can see that it's, uh, that's from the show, from my local succulent grower. But over here, these two pots are exactly the same with almost identical plants, except for a couple of these plants here. But let's go check it out first. So this is my Echeveria Sara Boni. And that one is Blue Moon. So, Blue Moon, Blue Moon, Sara Boni, Sara Boni, Sara Boni. Now over this pot, on, on this pot here, in this corner, uh, we're having Sara Boni 1, Sara Boni 2, and Sara Boni 3 with a one, two, three, blue moon. So when I got these plants, they were all roughly the same size. And if you notice anything, in this one I wrote two, one, half, two coconut coir, one granite, and half master succulent soil mix. And on the other side is a master succulent soil mix, but I've done a sandy mix, which is I put in one half sandy mix. So master succulent soil mix with a sandy mix. When I say sandy mix, I actually use the finer grit of my granite for this one. So it has become sort of sandy, but it's not really sandy. The reason why I did that is I want to see if does the soil mix really matter or make a difference in growing succulents. Now, one and then two 
but you can see the difference the saraboni is just so much bigger you can see that compared to the saraboni here and this one even look at that it's all still soft and uh, sort of drying out and then my camera is gonna overheat again this is one very sick baby bird poor baby P baby P is very sicky boy he doesn't want to eat anything so I don't know if it's old age or anything like that but he's not eating anything out of the ordinary anyway except I gave him a different seed so I don't know whether that made him sick or Oh, poor sicky boy. Poor sicky boy, baby pee, -pee. Oh, poor baby boy. Oh.